It's Jason Tatum day here as we march through the off season. How much better was he really? We'll look at some of the strengths, some of the weaknesses that were weird this season. It's all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry O'B. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finish. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Locked On Celtics podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network where it's your team every day, Monday through Friday. You get a free, fresh podcast dropped directly to your device if you're a subscriber. So open up your favorite podcasting app. Click subscribe if you're a new listener. All of you everydayers who keep saying you're you know, you're listening every Monday through Friday. Thank you so, so much for, for being that much of a diehard. I really do love the fact that you're here. All the time. You can watch the show on YouTube. You can hop over there at the Lockdown Celtics YouTube channel. Ring the bell, get notified, hop in the comment section, have a debate, have a conversation, all that stuff. I'm John Corrales. I used to play back in the day, and now I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Lockdown. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. So today's conversation is uh, all about Jason Tatum. We'll we'll get into strengths and weaknesses, uh, all of that stuff. We're just going to take every day this week, uh, minus like, you know, to, we're recording this show before the NBA Finals Game 5. Maybe by the time you listen to this, Denver's celebrating a championship. Maybe Miami has forced uh, a Game 6. We'll talk about some of that stuff tomorrow because it is relevant to the Celtics. Um but today it's all about Jason Tatum. And today it is with my good friend, Tom Westerholm, Tom oh. underscore NBA. What's going on, man? Not much, man. I was uh, contemplating whether or not down the line, I want to start saying I also played and uh, just like at LA fitness, you know, like, like <laughs> I, might, I, might, I never, I never might've played professionally, but ask about me in Springfield, Massachusetts. Like you'll hear about the, like I was a shooter, you know, there you go. There you go. The, the tales, Maybe one day we'll just do a feature. We'll go down to the LA Fitness in Springfield and we'll say, tell us about Tom Westerholm. Try to find one person who remembers me. Like, oh, yeah, Tom. Like, yeah, yeah. He was. He was oh, yeah. The, the guy with the, hmm? Yeah, yeah. Could you? Could you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that guy. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was really not my forte. I was good in the mid range. I was good in the mid range. Um, I was more of a back to the basket guy. I love yeah, I loved playing work, inside. Right? Yeah. yeah. I love that. I just, I miss it. I miss it. Um, especially you, like it, it definitely comes out when you hear me being like, why don't you just get in there? There's a footwork. Every time I go to the practice and like, I'm watching these guys practice post-ups. I'm like, you're not doing anything besides backing somebody down. Like it's just pound, pound, pound. Like g- give me some footwork. Give me Where's some the artistry. Like, where is the artistry? Thank you. I mean, come on, like Tatum, especially let's dive in. Jason Tatum could be a great post player mm-hmm. because he does have that footwork. He's a little slick. He's got that nice, big, wide shoulders that you can, if if you can master the old Paul Pierce move where you, he just slide through one way and then broaden his shoulders way out. And next thing you know, the guy who is beside you is behind you and he's fouling you. It's such a great little trick. That is one of the improvements that Jason Tatum can make. Uh, I guess I should save that for like the week because I have over there, way over on the screen over there, the the lineup now of what it's supposed to be. And I'm already diving into the weaknesses. But no, I really I really would love to see if we talk about how much better was he, how much better could he be if he figured out how to use that body of his uh, – I think analytics have have ruined post play. This is my one anti analytics. I, I believe in anti. I'm not an anti analytics guy. I believe what the stats tell us. I think there's there's definitely room for that. But this concept, and I've heard like, um, 
Oh, I mean, I've, I've heard of a lot of coaches talk about like, well, why would you go get as close to a defender as possible? It doesn't make sense. Like, because when the defender is on top of you, you can actually feel and manipulate where he is. It's, it's like martial arts. You actually want to be close to your opponent so you can manipulate the body and, and, and get to where you want to be. And Tatum is such a great candidate for that because of his build, his size, his touch. I think if you got him into the post two, three, four times a game, he can get some easy buckets, especially early on and really get going. Well, especially, you know, you want to talk about something like how much better was he this season in tandem with one of those weaknesses, right? Like, you know, as a passer, the the level that he got to this year, especially, you know, at, at times where it was probably, you know, one of the best things in his game. Like, he, he was really good this season. Um, you want to talk about a deadly way to be like Nikola Jokic is showing us right now yeah. how your offense can be if you've got somebody who's really elite at at both scoring and passing out of some of those, you know, post-up situations or rolling down the lane, whatever it might be. But um, yeah, yeah. Using, using that back to the basket game, collapsing the defense a little bit, spraying the ball out. That's a, that's a great way to play as well. And um, a great way to uh, generate threes, which was something that we talked about pretty often during the, the postseason, where it's not just take the threes, it's also generate them. And if that goes, if that comes from the post, I feel like a lot of those threes end up being really good looks. So when we look at how much better was he, he went from second team all NBA to first team all NBA. And it was it wasn't even close. It was a very much a lock, first team All NBA, uh, done. Uh, and and look, the numbers the numbers support it. He he averaged thirty points per game for the first time in his career, uh, and that's that's hard to do. So he added a little bit more than four points per game. He shot better overall, which means he really shot better from two. Yeah. Uh, because he dropped as a three point shooter, uh, and he took a bunch more free throws. He rebounded better. He passed a little bit better. Um, he, you know, turnovers were kind of flat, but in, in generally speaking, he had a demonstrably better season this year than last year. But I think there's so much room for him to grow as a player. Like, I don't think we've even touched how good he can be. And and I'm not saying like, he's going to reach a, I don't know, a Kevin Durant level. I don't think he's going to be that good. Uh, but maybe, maybe like, I, I just feel like with his, again, with his touch and, and his ability to get to certain places on the floor I think there is so much more efficiency that can be built into his game. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we saw, to me, like I think this season was kind of the start of things for, in that direction, right? I think I think this, well, I mean, I guess it could go, really go one of two ways, right? It could be like that this season was an outlier in terms of all these points and all this efficiency and like, you know, getting to the, getting, getting to the free throw line, all this stuff. Or this could be kind of um, the, the start of, a really pretty major progression, both for him and for the Celtics. Like, like, so obviously the three pointers dropped a little bit, but I mean, I really, you know, that we like, I think the free throw thing was really, really important. I remember last summer talking to often about, okay, if he gets to these free throw thresholds, he's probably going to average 30 points a game. And he didn't even quite get there. I think it was like eight free throws a game. Like if he attempted eight free throws a game, it was like, you know, he scored 30 points, X percent of the time. I mean, you know, he took more this year for sure, but it, you know, it was, it was in the sevens like, and yeah, he got himself over 30. I think, you know, when, when you kind of consider where his game is going, I think one of the areas that's really going to be important is getting to the rim, getting downhill and making that basically kind of the biggest area of success for him. Like, like, I don't know how consistent we can expect him to be as a three point shooter. Like he's just been so streaky over the course of his career, even in kind of like his uh, rookie year, second year, he would go through these like ungodly stretches where it's just like this, this guy is the best player in the NBA. He's making every yeah. three. Takes. Like, I just don't think that's going to be who he is <clears throat> over the course of an 82 game season. But we really, this year started to see that he can still be hyper efficient. He can still get to the free throw line 10 times. He can still, um, you, you know, get to third, like just kind of grind his way to 30 points on any average Thursday, you know, any average Wednesday, whenever the Celtics play. That guy is, uh, that that's a heck of a basketball player. That's a, a, a really crucial guy. And I think 
what I what I really want to see Tatum do is shore up that part of his game, shore up the part of the game where he, where he's getting to the rim, shore up the part of the game where he's where he's kicking the ball out, spraying the ball out on the drives, shore up, continue to shore up the parts of his game where he gets to the free throw line, whether that is out of a pick and roll, whether that is out of a post up, whatever it is. I just think like being that really big, strong presence around the rim. Um, in tandem with his touch, in tandem with his handle, in tandem with all the stuff that has made him special to this point is what really kind of vaults him up going forward, which, like you pointed out, is kind of crazy to say about a 30-point-per-game All-NBA first-team player, but, like, you know, you can just see it with him. Like, there's there's a lot still there that's that's it, that's just kind of right there for him to take. Yeah, yeah. I think I think ultimately where I can see him landing is still taking these, you know, he took 21 shots a game considering the team that he's on, considering that he's, you know, on the same team as Jalen Brown. I don't want to see necessarily an uptick in the shots per game, but there's also like, it's a little bit of a deceiving number because when you take eight and a half free throws, you're really, you're really, your usage is, is, uh, the, the big number. In fact, let's, let me just take a quick look at his usage there. It was 32.7 percent this year up from 32.1 the year before so like the usage is up um there's there is uh you know if you shave some of the turnovers like 2.9 turnovers is not horrible but it's it's worse when it matters yeah um it's worse in the playoffs uh but you shave some of that down you get to the free throw line a little bit more you maybe, I think nine three pointers a game is too many for him. They're, they, you know, Joe Mazzulla might argue it's not enough, but I, I think it's, I think it's like two too many. I think, I think he's, and the two too many are the ones that he's searching for. Like he just, there, there are a couple of games where you're like, okay, man, like you didn't have to, you're not, you don't have to just keep searching and pressing for that shot to fall just take it a little bit more organically. Think about the drive first. Um, there, there is a way to pump that number up where he's still taking the 21 shots, but he's, he's adding three, four points per game. He, he could be a 33, 34 point per game guy. I think it's very easy to add two free throws and an extra bucket. That's all. That's all I'm asking for is one extra bucket. Take one of those missed three pointers, turn it into a made two. Yep. And then, take another one of those missed three pointers and turn it into a foul that gets you to the line and that gets you three or four more points. So I think, I think as good as he was and he was definitely better, there's, there's more, there is definitely a lot more to his game. Let's come back. We'll, we'll fold in some of the strengths that he's had here uh, in just a minute. First today's show is brought to you by eBay motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits just right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, You'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. I want to thank you for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Make sure you uh, are back the rest of this week. Like I said, we are uh, doing the... Uh, individual breakdowns all week, all week long. We're, we'll get through it next week as well. We're really going to take deep, deep dives into these players and and have in depth conversations about just like we're having Jason Tatum today. So let's let's look at who they are, what they can do better, and, and all of that. So let's continue this conversation with Tom Westerholm. The things that Tatum did well, and I think it just starts with when he's driving with force he is an absolute when you talk about first team nba guy that's the guy the 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 tatum that we saw in what was it game 7 against the sixers yeah. the 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 guy that 
that just is a just a force. I'm going here. You can't stop me. And the only thing you can do, your only chance is to foul me. And that guy, that guy is MVP level guy. The guy we saw in the first 20 games of the season or so, that guy, when he was at the, the head of the straw poll that Tim Bontemps does, you remember like at the beginning of the, the, the first straw poll, Tatum was in the lead. So, and like, it wasn't that it, like, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a stretch. It wasn't like a, this is a fresh face that we want to get in there. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I'm sick of Jokic, maybe Tatum. It was like, no, like Tatum is that guy right now. Like he's that he good was. right now. There was like, it was not a, but yeah, there, there wasn't a lot of question about that one. No, that guy is a super aggressive rim attacker. And this is why I, I, I am a little bit at odds with Joe Mazzulla and one of my questions about Missoula side note <laughs> is did he, did he, did he lean into the three point shooting because that was his only chance of, of winning with a team that he had no plan for, you know, or, or is he just, when he comes in next year, it's going to be the same thing. Get 53 point attempts up. We're going to win that way. Um, and, and the thing is more often than not in the regular season that that does win. That's the thing, it would, but not in the playoffs. Yeah. Tatum drove me nuts when he would come out because he had a, a rough shooting year from three. In fact, was it his worst three-point shooting season? Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. It was. Following last season, which was his previously worst three-point shooting season, um, which we'll get into, I guess, with the weaknesses. I guess the, the, the outline is a little bit just kind of fluid. <laughs> um, <laughs> it doesn't if, say on today's show in this order. It just says on. Well, that's true. That's true. That's true. Um, <laughs> this is part I, of my take. That's right. <laughs> when uh, when the when he came out and started just firing his when his first two or three shots were three pointers, it became a matter of, well, if they fall, then he's going to be hot. If they don't, then he's going to be cold. And is that going to impact how he plays? Uh, where, when he came out, I think aggressive and drove yeah. and played through people. And, you know, that, that playing off of two feet, which he doesn't do often enough. But when he plays off two feet and plays through people, he's so big that he ends up getting fouled and he gets a lot of and one opportunities. I want to see that guy more often because that is a strength of his. He can get by guys. And if he can do that, then what I said before the break, one missed three pointer turned into a bucket yeah. and one missed three pointer turned into a foul where you get to the line. If he does that, then that's next level stuff. 34, 30, 34 point per game score is next level stuff. It is. And, and I really think like w when you look at kind of the, the potential for, of Tatum and the, the stuff that he was good at this year, you know, you talked about how, like just going to the rim hard and you know, like he, he's got this like cool Euro step and this kind of like swooping Euro step that yeah. he finishes off and draws a foul with so often. And, and like he makes the shot pretty often because of how uniquely big and strong he is, but he can make the move because of how kind of uniquely skilled and sort of like, um, you know, like, like kind of how smooth his game is. And it's like that combination of things is very unique and very interesting. And, you know, he's not like, and this is no disrespect to Giannis, who's, you know, like one of the greatest players, you know, of, of the last decade or whatever you want to call it last NBA history, whatever you want to call him. Like, He's not Giannis. He, he, he's not just kind of crashing forward, but he can crash. Like he's got some right. crash to his game, but he's also got a lot of finesse to his game. And I think just the, the continued marriage of those two things and the continued combination of those two things in his game, you know, where you start talking about like, okay, if Tatum can does this consistently, if he gets downhill like this consistently, I mean, you meant you made the Durant comparison. Okay. What if you took a little Durant and a little Giannis and you kind of squished it together and you said, okay, uh, this is a superstar. Like, like yeah, this is, yeah, this is an MVP guy. And I mean, 
it's crazy that we have those conversations about a guy, but Tatum's that good. Like, like Tatum has Tatum, Tatum's ceiling is that high that we can have those types of conversations about him. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think he's, he's done a, a really good job. I count in his strengths. Uh, first of all, let's get rebounding. He, yeah. he's been, he's been a monster rebounder. Yeah. You know, I think he could average 10. I do too. You know, yeah. I think he well, could yeah. average 10 and that's, I mean, Think about that for for you know your star player and 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 it's not exactly what we thought that he would be, but yeah. he could average he could average thirty four and ten. Think about that monster. Think how many elite now I'm now I'm a a, a student of the eighties NBA and like thirty four and ten like you're you're entering like. Charles Barkley territory, you know, like uh, those guys were getting like 30 points, 14, 15, 16 rebounds, but to average a 30 point double, double as a wing player. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that would be amazing. And I think, look, all he has to do 1.2 more per game, get a couple more rebounds per game. That's, that's it. Well, and if, uh, if, like every playoff game, he was great getting in double digits. Like it, you know, he's, he's there a lot. He is, he is. So, and that's that's important. That's important for the defense. I think he's he remains uh potentially a, a really good defender on any night. I think yeah. some nights um he has shown kind of like I don't know if it was a laziness. I don't one of my biggest fears for Tatum is that he's starting to get into the oh, now I don't need to play defense because I'm I'm a you know 30 plus point per game score so I'm going to like relax on the defensive end and I'm going to save my energy for the offensive end where where they need me. I don't know if that was a product of he got tired at the end of the season. We saw it a lot more at the end of the season. You know, you saw the clip of Joe Mazzula in what was it? In Philly where they were he was like awesome game, now you need to play defense. And it's like whoa. So Tatum, Tatum still has the potential to be an amazing two-way player. Um, he's still he can block shots. Like his strengths, his what are his strengths? His strengths are everything. Everything except three-point shooting right now is is really one of his strengths. Well, all right, let's take a second here. We'll get into the um the weaknesses, which have I've been talking about all along here <laughs> anyway. But uh, among them, the three-point shooting. Uh, I'll do that next. First, today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel, you got one more chance here. Uh, maybe you you took advantage of that uh, heading into the uh, – I'm doing this before the finals game. Maybe you're out of chances for the NBA. But you can bet on baseball, you bet whatever. And if you're a new customer, you get a no-sweat first bet for up to two thousand five hundred dollars that's two thousand five hundred dollars twenty five hundred dollars in a more casual way back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win so open up that FanDuel app scroll through you got all the sports that you want uh you got all kinds of deals all kinds of like special promotions same game parlays it's all there the app is safe and secure and when you win you get get paid instantly it goes right into your bank account there's no better place to bet playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Fanduel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Just to ask you if you're going to bet, please gamble responsibly. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Check out Locked On NBA. I will be on Locked On NBA uh, tomorrow. This is a Tuesday show. Yeah, I host on Wednesdays with uh, Jake Madison. So, We'll be talking uh, either uh, kind of like a final review of the Denver championship season, or we'll be getting ready for a game six, whatever it is, whatever the big stories are on Lockdown NBA. We got you covered. All right, Tom. Uh, the three-point shooting, we've gone now two straight seasons where he's just a tick above 35%. That is below league average. League average is somewhere on 36% now. Um, that's two years of now 
that's a big sample size, two seasons. Um, in fact, when you look at the totals, he's shot, that's, that's about 1,337 uh, three-point attempts where he's made uh, 470. So that's not good. It's not good. Um, and that's dragged his career average down to 37.5, which is just a little bit above league average. He's, he's aside from one season here where he shot 40%, he hasn't been an elite three point shooter. I'm, I'm dying for him to, to calm down on the three point shooting. I'm dying for him to dial it back. Uh, because his biggest weakness right now, I think two, two things come to mind. Streaky shooting that has not really come through and uh, a, a mental weakness, I'll say, when he gets frustrated and he just can't get out of his own way with the officials. And it's, I think those two things, I bring them up at the same time because I think they're tied. I think they're tied together when he can't hit shots. And especially when he's like, it turns into, well, I'm going to try and drive and he's not getting the foul calls. It all falls apart for him. Yeah. Well, and and it's funny because I I hear you hesitate when you say mental weakness because it's like, you know, like it's kind of a loaded. It is loaded, right? I don't mean it that way, but I can't think of anything, any other way to put it. Yeah. Right now, because it it is in his head. Yeah. And and I think, you know, I think one of the things that that we kind of learned, like what guys kind of admitted to during the playoff run was also like, sometimes I think they get in their heads because they just want to do well really badly. And sometimes when you want it a little too bad, it's like, ah, you're going to miss a lot of shots, you know, like, because you're overthinking things. I think that, and I mean that again, like, that's not, it's not mental weakness, but like, I don't know what else to to call that because it's, it's not weakness, but it's like, yeah, you, you got to get, you got to be able to get past that. Like you've got to be able to want it really badly and still perform well. Um, but can I jump in for a second though? Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. No, please. It, this is the one place where I think mental weakness is actually a, a kind of the most, this is the most apt opportunity to say like, this is a, a, a mental weakness because it's not something that's, out of your control. This is something where it's like, you're just, you're trying too hard. Your focus is in the wrong place. Mm. You're not, it's, it's a lack of mental discipline. Let's call it. If you want to make it a little bit more, uh, a little less kind of harsh when we're talking about it, but at this level, you know, this is, this is where the, the line, Hey, you get paid a lot of money to have this, this level of discipline. Like, this is the one place where that's kind of appropriate. You know, it's not, it's not like, oh, you get paid all this money. You should be able to play 82 minutes a game, 82 games at 48 minutes, right? Like you're human beings. Right. But at the same time, like there's, there's this level where they kind of rely on like, yeah, oh, there's this human nature, but like, you know, actually th- there is, but like, you've got to find a way to rise above human nature because the guys that we all idolize, the guys that you all idolize have that thing that says, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm better than human nature, right? It's the Jordans, the Kobe's, it's those guys that that I, I, yeah, human nature, but you know what? Nah, I don't have time for human nature. I have time to sit there and be in my head and focused and Tatum, the lack of focus hurts him for too long in too many games. And that leads to turnovers and missed shots and technical fouls and, defensive mistakes, that lack of mental focus, like he needs to go to some sort of yeah, I don't know, sports therapist or some hypnotist or something to say, you gotta, you gotta keep it in a certain zone here where the, you have to move on to that next play because when you lose that focus, the team loses games. And what's interesting about that is I think, we see and what kind of ties it back to the three point shooting is I do think that there are times where we see Tatum focus on driving, right? Where we see him focus on getting to the hoop or we see him focus and like, and he does lock in and those are his best games. 
You know what I mean? Like, I, like we, those are the ones where you just, you're like, oh, nobody's stopping him tonight. Mm. And, and then I do think that you see him mix in some of the three pointers. You do see him mix in some of the stuff that like does work for him. I, I just looked it up, right? This season, LeBron James averaged 6.9 three pointers per game. That's a pretty good number for Jason Tatum, yeah. right? Like 6.9 would be like, that would kind of be to your point, right? Like you take one away from, you take one, one add one to the drive, add one to the free throw line, yeah. take away a couple threes and, and, and you're, you know, yeah, maybe you're, maybe you're at 32 instead of 30, you know, like, like it's pretty reasonable to, to think that that might be possible. So, um, yeah, I mean, so anyway, to your, to your focus point, I think that that, I think you're right. I think that that crosses over into a bunch of different parts of his game. It crosses over into the, the, the complaining about fouls. It crosses over into, um, just the way that he plays. It crosses over into his consistency, you know, like his, his occasional streakiness. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, like, I mean, it's all, I mean, it, I mean, that that's the real human nature, right? That everything yeah. is interconnected. Did. It's just like 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 everything connects to each other uh, for for anybody no, who's true. perform something of this magnitude. I'm I'm all, I feel like I'm gonna like contradict myself. And may, may, maybe maybe I'm thinking about this the wrong way. Maybe maybe there's a different way. Maybe the the real thing for Tatum is is not maybe saying that he should focus on driving more isn't the best way to put it. Because I'm thinking about Kevin Durant. And like, that's, that's the ceiling. Like, I think that's the Jason Tatum can be like at that level. There's no reason why he can't be at that level. It's, it's a mentality, right? Like they, they've got, I, so. I guess, I guess my, my question with Durant though, is I just feel like Durant's a better shooter. Like that, well, he is a better shooter. Really an eye test thing, right? Like I, I don't, I haven't looked up any stats to like prove all. Oh, no, he's a, he's absolutely a better shooter. Better he's shooter. absolutely, he's a, better absolutely a better shooter. But this is the thing. Like I, I think it's a mental thing. I, I think some of it's a form thing because uh, Durant has a, a much quicker release. Tatum, Tatum has a little bit more kind of like uh, more. It feels like he's got like more joints involved, even though he doesn't. He just feels like he's got more kind of like he he kind of chambers it, gets his fingers on the on the laces. Then gets it up and then the it. process. Is, you know what I mean? Like, it's very uh, it's notable. Like you you know it when you see it with Jason. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. right. There's like it's like it's it comes in stages. <laughs> yeah. Whereas yeah. Durant is definitely a pure shooter, but even so, even so, it's like Tatum still gets any shot that he wants. Yeah. He still gets the shot off. Yeah. I think it's a slow shot, but he he can get it whenever he wants. And it's such a high release that yeah. no one can really touch it. And, and this is why I think he, he has maybe not be Kevin Durant, but when I, and, and, but somewhere between Kevin Durant and even poor man's Kevin Durant, like he's better than yeah. poor man's Kevin Durant. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's totally. a, there's a totally. level in between there where it's like, he can reach that. And I'm, and it's a, it's a mentality thing because, I don't think Kevin Durant looks at it and says, well, I got to focus on driving. And if it's not there, I got to do blah, blah, blah. You know what KD says? I'm I'm getting buckets. I am scoring. And it doesn't matter. What what are you doing? Me and I chill. That's right. You know, and it's, I'm going to get to that mid-range. He destroys 15 feet away from the basket. Yeah. (laughs) Kevin Durant destroys. Jason Tatum sucks 15 feet from the basket. He just hasn't been that good. Because a lot of that, historically, yeah. uh, I don't have this past year's number in front of me, but he historically, mid-range has not been as, he's been like a 38, 39% mid-range shooter. Yeah. And it's because he, those are become fadeaways and those turnarounds and they're his bailout shot. Like I, I've, I've gone too crazy dribbling at the perimeter there. They've run me off the line. There's a big at the rim. And I've got to take this crazy shot here. Like, I feel like that's, it's kind of like a bailout shot. I will say too, just a real quick note is that I do think that that's one of the reasons that his three point percentages have fallen like this far. Like he hasn't been shooting as well, but he also has taken a few more bailout three pointers than he used to. Like, like those kind of like, like like somebody's got to get a shot up. That is Tatum sometimes. That's true. That's true. Um, And I, I just think that he has the ability to and, and it, it starts with it starts with the drives, but if you can become 
that effective as a driver, then everything else opens up. And, and so I'm kind of like working in my previous comment of focus on driving, like to get to that next level of it's not about the drives. You got to start making it about the drives. Um, so let me, let me just do a quick thing. I just looked it up 16 to 24 feet, which is kind of mid range ish. Uh, Oh, here we go. Mid range 47, 47.4% this year. So better below, still below where it needs to be. Yeah. But 47.4% is, is a lot better, uh, than it was. Do you have the uh, attempts there? Cause I, I feel like it was a much fewer attempts. So, okay. So look at last season, the, the that was 37%. He shot 27 of 73, according to NBA.com, uh, from the mid range, 37%. Okay. This, this past season, he shot 18 of 38. There you go. Half as many, half right. as many shots from the mid range. Um, and the, the efficiency went up. I think, I think where it needs to be is where the, the shots, the shots were in the past, but somewhere up around 50%. Like there's no reason why he can't be 50%. Two seasons ago, 35.7%, but he only took 28 shots in the mid range. So, so going through his, he has sucked from the mid range. Like uh, that's, that's not, this past season was his best season from the mid range. And, and he, and he still was below that 50% mark that he needs to be. But anyway, point is he needs to like, get to a point where he can be a just do whatever I want. You can't stop me from getting this shot and, and being an efficient guy at it. It does start with him driving and, and, and making that kind of his priority looking for that more. But once that's established, then he can step into any shot that he can step into in rhythm he can take from any distance. He can make it. So that that's where I want him to be. Not even the, the fadeaways. Save that for a post up, just to bring it full circle. Get into that post. Put your shoulder into somebody's chest. Fade away. That's a nice little shot. That's a nice little shot for you to get a get. You can get ten points a game on that shot alone. Uh, but he needs to fix those weaknesses, those holes in his scoring game, because there's there's a really efficient scorer down there, and. I'll finish with this. I'll finish this thought with this anyway. <laughs> if you can become that efficient guy, like I'm talking about, that gives more opportunity for Jalen Brown and the other yeah. guys on the team to get the right. shots that they need. Yep. So you can be a 33, 34, 35 point per game scorer on the same shots. And you're not taking anything away from anybody else. You're just, being more confident, stepping into shots, and and just being a little bit more ruthless with your offensive game, and everyone else can still do what they do, and and you can pile up the points. If you do that, like you know how there was like a very clear line of delineation in the MVP voting, right? There was like, okay, you're like by the end of the season, you were either going to vote for Embiid, or you were going to vote for Jokic, or you were going to vote for Giannis, right? Exactly. If you do that, it, like if you become that efficient guy and you're Tatum, then you're in that group. Then you're yes. right there too. Then you, like, you're not the top of the next group. You are in that. You you are above that line of delineation. That's where you need to get to if you're hoping to get to that MVP level. That's true. That's 100 percent correct. Um, and it's a great place to end this because what can he be? He can be an MVP. Absolutely. He can be an MVP. And the other thing I, I do want to, I, I want to close my section with this. This was the first year that I thought that was the case. Right? Yeah, like, no, that's like, yeah, absolutely. And that's, and that I think is, you want to talk about how much better was he this year was the year. It's like, okay, not only do we see the potential of him being an MVP. It's like, okay, I can, I can picture it now. Like I, yeah. I, I it's not just some, it's not just some abstract thing that maybe he'll be someday down the line. It's like, no, this guy could be an NBA MVP someday. And I, I can see how it would happen. Yep. Yep. The, he hasn't, he hasn't been there yet. Like you said, he, there's definitely that line between the top three and Tatum. And that's that, that could just come down to that's the difference between them. We're, that's the difference between us doing this podcast today versus three weeks from now. You know what I mean? Yeah. For, you know, instead of getting ready to, to say Boston uh, or, or actually me, 
being in Boston for a game right now, right? We're recording this, uh, you know, 20, it's 20 past eight right now. I should be like throwing my food, the, the, the rest of my food away so I can go sit down and get ready for the Celtics getting ready to clinch a championship. If Tatum was that guy, maybe we're there. Yeah. Um, and look, there's a lot of other things. There's a lot of other stuff that that could have made it so the Celtics were playing right now versus sitting at courtside at WNBA games right now. You know, um, part of it's the coaching, which we talked about yesterday with Howard Beck. Part of it's you know on Jalen Brown, who somehow you know he he finally gets that supermax and all of that money, and we're still talking about trading him. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. all of that stuff. But there, there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into this. But Tatum, we start with Tatum because he's he's at the head of it all. And as good as Jason as Jalen Brown can be, Tatum is MVP level good. Yep. And man, it just he's been great. But man, he can be so much better. All right. Thanks, Tom, for uh, hopping on here. Appreciate, appreciate you, man, as always. Yes, sir. Uh, appreciate all of you regular listeners, regular watchers, you everydayers. You're my favorite people, but only slightly ahead of you new listeners and new watchers because welcome aboard. I love everybody. So hopefully if you're still watching the show and you're new, that means you're ready to subscribe. Get these videos every day uh, on YouTube. Get this podcast every day for your drive to work or you're walking the dog or walking to class. So actually, I don't know. Is anybody walking to class anymore? It's the middle of June. Whatever it is, I'm glad that you're listening. I'm glad that you're watching. I would love it if you shared the podcast. Tell your friends. Tell everybody that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Your team every day.